Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be sharing with you five holiday appetizers that you need to make. One of my favorite things about the holiday season is all the finger foods. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you five different holiday finger foods appetizers that you can make to take to your next holiday gathering. The first recipe that we are going to try today is a recipe that I found that calls this fancy pigs in a blanket. Now I've always just made pigs in a blanket with the little Smokies and Crescent roll dough, but this one says it's fancy because we're going to be adding Dijon mustard. We're going to be adding some sharp cheddar cheese. Now I have this smoked Gouda cheese that I've had in my fridge that I need to use up. So I think I'm going to use this instead, but the recipe that I'm following calls for sharp cheddar cheese. The recipe also calls for everything seasoning. I have some of this everything but the bagel seasoning that I've had for a while. So I am going to be using that. And again, as always, my recipes that I'm following will be listed down below in the description box. All right, so I'm gonna take my crescent rolls and they are going to be cut in half like so. And then the recipe calls for Dijon mustard, which I love Dijon mustard. Put just a dollop on the wider end. Then we're gonna add some cheese. The recipe calls for cheddar cheese. I'm using this Gouda because Gouda is expensive. I need to use it before it goes bad. And hey, it's fancy, right? So I'm gonna take a little piece of Gouda, put it on top of the mustard, Put the little smoky, and we're gonna roll it up. Ah, that slipper knee. Just like so. So we have our mustard, gouda, little smoky, roll it up. So I'm just gonna keep rolling these up and then I'll show you what we do before we put them in the oven. Here are those fancy pigs in a blanket all rolled up with the Dijon mustard and the Gouda cheese. Now the recipe says to sprinkle the top with everything seasoning. So that's what I'm gonna do. these. We're going to put these in a 375 degree oven for 10 minutes. Here are our fancy pigs in a blanket out of the oven. They look so good. The next recipe that we're going to make are jalapeno popper cheese balls. We're going to make these as many personal cheese balls. So we're going to need a jalapeno. We're going to need some cheddar cheese, Ritz crackers, cream cheese. Oh, this recipe only calls for four ounces. So I'm only going to be using this half a block that I have left over. We're going to need some bacon. I went ahead and just got these fully cooked bacon pieces to make things easier. We're going to use a garlic powder and minced onion. Okay, now I'm going to dice my jalapeno. If you don't want the heat, you need to take out the seeds and their membranes. I love jalapeno poppers. And when I saw this recipe, I was like, yes, please. We're gonna take four ounces of softened cream cheese. We're then gonna take one cup of the cheddar cheese. We need a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm just going to eyeball it. And a fourth of a teaspoon of onion powder, or I'm using minced onions. I'm just going to eyeball it again. Then we're going to give this a mix. I'm going to add some salt. Now 
Now we're gonna give this a mix. And the easiest way I'm gonna do it is get my hands in there. Okay, once you have formed your little ball here, we're gonna add in a fourth a cup of bacon. So I've got these real bacon pieces I'm gonna add in. And then our jalapeno. All right, so now I'm gonna have to get my hands back in there again to incorporate the bacon with the jalapeno. Now that I have all that incorporated, I am going to, you could do this with a cookie scoop, but I'm not. I'm just gonna pinch off a little bit. And I'm gonna roll it into a ball, like so. Isn't that just cute? And then I'm gonna put them in this little container so I can put them in the fridge. This recipe is not gonna make a huge cheese ball. So um, if you're making this for a crowd, you may want to double the recipe. Individual cheese balls. Here are our mini jalapeno popper cheese balls. I'm gonna put these in the fridge and let them set up, but these are so cute. You could serve these with a pretzel stick in them, but I'm just gonna use Ritz crackers, whatever you think, but these smell delicious. The next recipe with a twist is I'm going to be making sausage balls with pimento cheese. I'm also gonna be using this pancake mix instead of Bisquick. I got this recipe from Cook, Clean, and Repeat. I'll leave that video linked below. But it sounded so interesting using the pimento cheese in this dish, so I decided I would try. So normally I like to use the hot sausage. They only had the country mild. So I did get the pimento cheese with the jalapeno peppers in it. If I was gonna make this again, I would definitely make sure I had the hot sausage. So I'm gonna take this pound of sausage, I'm going to put it here into my bowl. Next, I'm going to add this entire container of pimento cheese. So this is kind of replacing the shredded sharp cheddar cheese that you would normally put in, in sausage balls. So I'm very interested to see how this turns out. Next, I have half a block of cream cheese that I needed to use up and that's what the recipe called for. So I'm gonna start giving this a rough mix before I add in the baking mix. I wanna make sure all that cheese is incorporated into the sausage and this is kind of a tough job. So I'm probably gonna end up having to mix this with my hands, but we're we're gonna get this all mixed together. Next, the recipe called for one and a half cups of um, pancake mix. I've always made it with Bisquick, so I'm interested to see how this is going to affect the taste of the sausage balls. So I'm gonna just add this in slowly and get this all mixed up, and then we'll be ready to put these in the oven. Now I've seen a trick with sausage balls of scooping them into mini muffin tins. So I have this one sprayed, this will make 24. So I'm gonna start with this. And so I'm just gonna take a cookie scoop and I'm just going to take a scoop of the sausage ball mixture. And then I'm just going to drop it here into my mini muffin tin. I'm going to bake these in the oven for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of the sausage ball mixture left. So I'm just going to hand roll these out on a regular cookie sheet. So once these came out of the oven, this is what they look like. They smell amazing, they are crispy, and you can see the flecks of cheese and a little bit of the jalapeno from the pimento cheese. This next holiday appetizer I saw on Jessica O'Donohue's channel and it just looked so delicious. So I'm gonna be making loaded baked potato slices. We're gonna be needing some potatoes. Now I am just doing one potato, but you can do as many as you want with this. I'm gonna need some olive oil to brush the potatoes and some Italian seasoning to taste. And then we're gonna top with bacon, cheddar cheese, scallions, and then sour cream if you would like. I'm gonna start by slicing up my russet potato. I've washed it really well. It says to do like half inch slices. So I'm gonna do it about like, about like that thickness. And then I'm gonna put these over here on my pan. Okay. 
right, the recipe says to brush both sides with olive oil. I've already done one side. So I'm just gonna brush the potatoes. I've got the oven heated up to 375 and we are gonna be baking these for about 25 minutes. Now, after that, we are going to be topping these with the bacon and the green onions and the cheese. The recipe does call for brushing the bacon drippings onto the potatoes as well, but I didn't cook the bacon. I bought the bacon pieces. So that's a step that we're not gonna be doing, but that would be very delicious. Now we're gonna top with some Italian seasoning. and salt and pepper. All right, let's put these in the oven for 25 minutes. Here are those potatoes out of the oven. We're gonna top them now and get them back in the oven for five more minutes. So we've topped with the bacon pieces. Now we're gonna top with some cheddar, sharp cheddar cheese. top with the green onion. I know I'm going to love this. I mean, oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to get this back in the oven for five more minutes. And here are our potatoes, loaded potatoes out of the oven. You can top with a dollop of sour cream. This is smelling amazing. So for this appetizer, so I'm gonna start by chopping up my sausage and then I will show you, I mean, it's pretty much just a dump and go. So I'm gonna get this sausage open, I'm gonna get it chopped and uh, then we'll see how we dump this in the pot. All right, so here's my chopped up sausage. I'm gonna take that, put it in my saucepan with my handy dandy food mover. The link for one of these is down in the description box below if you're interested in checking it out. I love mine. I show it all the time on my channel. So here are my smoked sausages trimmed up. Gonna open this bottle of chili sauce and pour that in there. I'm thinking I'm gonna use the whole thing, but yeah, I'm gonna use the whole thing. I wanted to kind of wait and see how much sausage that produced, but there we go. So there's the chili sauce. It smells pretty good. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna need this whole container of grape jelly. Y'all know me when I cook, I very rarely follow a recipe. I just kinda eyeball it. I think I'm just gonna do half of this jar. So for 94 cents, I've still got half a jar of grape jelly left. I think that's a pretty good deal. So now all I'm gonna do is just kinda mix this up. Now that jelly, once this heats up, we'll can, um, melt down and that'll add the sweetness to the tartness of the chili. And so these are gonna be our smoked sausage bites that are gonna be one of our Christmas appetizers. So there you have it. There are five recipes that you need to make this holiday season and they were delicious. Hands down delicious. So you definitely need to give them a try. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.